Welcome to Break Check, everybody. Well, I'm going to jump right into the topic okay. that I have. I don't know what it's going to be, but I'm excited <clears throat> for it. So I am representing Ford because, unfortunately, Ford unfortunately, betrayed you're me. you're a Ford fan? Unfortunately, at this moment in time, Ford betrayed me. Ford betrayed you? Ford has betrayed us. You've been like one of their most reliable, loyal, back-supporting people. I, I like I've always liked Fords. I have. I yeah. Just, but Ford. What do, they, what do they do? Their quality has gone downhill. Do they not know who you are? I right. How Come on, guys. They? How dare they? I know we this have is, every car manufacturer watching us right now, and they obviously. should know who you are. Everybody, obviously, except McLaren. I may have upset them last week. Maybe. Oh. Well, I'm going to upset Ford this week. <laughs> okay. So I may not. I may not get my Mustang after all. So what's the deal with <laughs> Ford, man? So their quality in the past few years, well, actually in a while, has a lot of people say in a while has been on a downward slope. But as far as like build quality or like material use or what? Mostly build quality and like long term reliability. So it's like an engineered failure. A lot of it seems to be. There's a lot of engine issues and transmission issues. Mm -hmm. Um, So the big thing that's going on right now is recalls. Mm. Unfortunately, Ford ranked below average in 2023 in initial quality study um, done by J.D. Power and Associates or whatever they call themselves. J.D. Power. <laughs> They're the ones that give the uh, the award that looks like a little caliper, right? I believe so, yeah. yeah. I will say, here's the chart of uh, 2023 so the, U.S. The smaller the line, the better? The, the better, yeah. So, so you want a short line. Yeah, so this is the amount of problems per 100 vehicles. Wait, that Dodge each and has. Ram are at the top. Yeah, yeah. I don't what? know how. I honestly don't know how. <laughs> like, they're not even the same company anymore. Yeah, and Fiat and in the past. At the top. Yeah. Well, that's the initial well, though. That's true. Yeah, that's initial yeah. quality study. I'll tell you, so. all the, all the Mopar fans out there like throwing their hands up. Like, yeah, they're they're cheering. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> but I know, what I know is, but I know it's initial, but it's like, what is it like down the line though? Yeah. Long-term reliability is, is a different story. So out the gate. This is out the gate. Yeah. This is, this As is you out buy the it door. off the lot. Yeah. How many, how many problems that each brand have? But I don't know how much I trust this chart because look where Toyota is. Toyota this, is way at the bottom. Wow. <laughs> right next to, right next to Ford. So does it say 201? Uh, 201 problem. Stop it. Well, Dodge is at 140. <laughs> um, yeah, so Dodge and Dodge and Ram are both 140 and 141 problems per 100 vehicles, and Toyota is a 194 problems per 100 vehicles, and Ford is at 201. I wonder how much of that relates to like the Prius issues that they had. Uh, I, probably quite a bit because I'm sure it's just a general like everything. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, hmm. but. I'm sure to make you happy, Tesla and another electric brand, Pulsar, are at the very bottom with 257 for Tesla you know, and 313 for Pulsar. It's the Christmas season, so I'm not going to laugh in their face too hard. I'll too just hard. give Aww. a I'll just give a very, very you know, kind. heartwarming ha. I don't it's want to very, rub it in too much. It's very kind of you. Look yeah, at you. Well, you know, it's Christmas season. Yeah. You're I was you're, the Grinch last week. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You're not Grinchy today. I'm not Grinchy today. I have my (laughs) Chai a la mode from Dutch Bros, not a sponsor, but could be Dutch Bros. But look at the top of that list. It's Kia. I will say I've heard from a lot of people who have bought Kias Kias in the beginning. They love their Kia in the beginning, but then down the road, Mm -hmm. they have so many issues. I think I had a... I forget who it was, but I think I had a friend who actually had to change out the engine. But luckily, yeah. it was still under the, warranty. The whole motor? Yeah. Wow. Which yeah. is strange because Kia, when they first came out, was like the budget car. It was really, really cheaply made. Right. It's like if you want to buy a like a play school cozy coupe mm-hmm. with an engine in it, you get a <laughs> Kia. Yeah. But now, like, they've upped their game as far as appearance and what yeah. you would think the quality would be. Right. Yeah. But now they're getting problems. That's weird. Well, no, this they're, was a while. Actually, this was a while ago when before when she, they started getting nicer. Yeah, I, yeah. I didn't know they were getting nicer. Uh, well, <laughs> I thought they've, they well, still they still had the same quality. Like they changed their they changed their logo and they they're trying to use higher quality materials and right. I knew they they changed their logo, but that's good that they're getting higher quality materials. But yeah, this was like maybe gosh, 
seven years ago, maybe more than that. Oh, yeah, and, that was before they... Yeah, I, she doesn't have her upgraded. Kia anymore. But right. Was it a car or SUV? Uh, I think it was a car. But a lot of people tend to get the Kias because they're like, ooh, I love all these high-tech features and stuff like that. And then after and that, down the line... And so cheaply. Yeah, and then down the line... Yeah, they break. They, they break, yeah. It's like they use the Wish.com parts yeah. to make right. it. I mean, mom and dad had a Kia. I don't know if you remember the yeah, Kia Optima. Optima. Yeah, and it... <laughs> they went to trade it in. I don't remember why exactly. I think they just wanted to um, get an SUV, but... On the way to the dealership, the weather stripping around the windshield I remember just, that. just fell out. It just, yeah. <laughs> what? Like, yeah. The oh, no. They didn't even have the car very long. No, I think they had it for like a year. Yeah, it was less than two years. Yeah. And, and it was brand new when they bought it. Yeah, they that's, bought it brand new. That's so sad. <laughs> yeah. So so my dad stopped on the side of the road like like a couple miles from the dealership and like stuffed the weather stripping uh -huh. back into the windshield and then went and traded it in. And, you know, yeah. I was like, hey, it's your problem now. Yeah. <laughs> But it, but it, according to JD Power, they're like towards the top of the list now of having the least or initial initial issues. quality. A initial year later, qualities. your weather stripping will fall out. <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so I don't know how much I trust this study, but in it, according to them, initial quality Ford is you know on the lower end, which is unfortunate. Okay, so I'm still waiting for <clears> the betrayal. The betrayal? Yeah, is that the betrayal? The fact that their quality is low. Well, Ford has betrayed us uh -huh. in their quality. That's true. But Consumer Reports says that the Explorer and the F-150 should be avoided. So it's mostly body-on-frame stuff that's having the most With issues. With the F-150? Isn't that like the highest-selling pickup yeah. in America? Yeah. And supposedly, and from what I've heard and watching other videos, a lot of people are like saying that I'm done buying F-150s because like... Really? Especially people who do a lot of work and drive a lot of miles, they'll get like 80,000, 90,000 miles on them, then they'll have to rebuild the engine. I know there's been... So whenever a, a company comes out with a, a new product or like a new motor, like when F-150 and Ford came out with the the twin turbo V6 to try to save fuel and get the same amount of power, mm -hmm. they were really, really awesome. And they actually put it through some very, very stressful, strenuous testing. Yeah, some and crazy it did torture tests. Yeah, it did very well. But in real, real world application, mm -hmm. they're seeing now, you know, 15 years later, yeah. that they're starting to have like very large issues. Yeah. And so I don't like supercharging and turbocharging and all that sort of thing is awesome, but it seems to always develop yeah. long-term problems. Yeah. It's, so if you're a person that likes to get rid of your car every five to 10 years and change it out, no big deal. But if, you, yeah. if you're the kind of person that likes to buy a vehicle and just hold on to it, yeah, like I would avoid turbo stuff and supercharger would be yeah. more reliable than a turbo. Yeah, either way, if you're looking for longevity, if, you, if you're the kind of person that buys a car and then runs it till it dies, I would avoid turbo and super just in general. Go naturally aspirated. You're, you're mm -hmm. just going to have the best luck with it. Yeah. Especially if you, you know, keep it well maintained. And if your choice <clears throat> is turbocharger, supercharger, or EV, it's turbocharger or supercharger. Don't go EV. <laughs> EVs may actually have I good know. reliability that is your only other than vehicle. the battery. Other than the battery. Yeah. Other than EV. the whole power source. <laughs> hey, the, you know. The thing but, that makes the, it an EV is, but the, the, is the problem. But the electric it. motor. 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 I said that weird. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you did but the electric the motor. The motor. <laughs> that part will probably last a long time. Yeah, the motors would be fine. Yeah, you just have to swap out the battery. It'll only cost you about $20,000. Yeah, it'll only cost you another car. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. No worries. Yeah, most Tesla owners... That we got like the first wave of Teslas. Yeah. Some of them are replacing their batteries. It's costing them like 24 grand. A, a lot of the first Priuses, some people are actually making a business out of getting old Priuses that won't run anymore. Mm -hmm. Not because the engine's bad, not because anything's wrong with battery. it, but the battery is too dead and the mm -hmm. car will refuse to run without a good battery. Yeah. So people will like go to the junkyard and find these Priuses that are perfectly fine mm -hmm. and they'll swap out the battery and then resell them and make a profit. That's actually becoming mm -hmm. a business now. As I said many months ago on our pod, the I wouldn't mind having an EV, but never as my primary vehicle. Mm -hmm. Got to have a naturally aspirated primary vehicle. Yeah. It's, just too, it's too reliable. No, I agree. I Being that like Jen and I have two cars. If mm -hmm. one of them was an EV and we just took it to work, we drove it on the weekends, then fine, whatever. I had no mm -hmm. issue with that. But the other one, I would still want to be naturally yeah. aspirated. If, you know, like something happens with a family member in another state, 
I would like to have the comfort of being able to just start my car up and go. Yeah. Got to be there now. Right. Get in and go. Yeah. Don't have to worry about planning out your charging stations and wasting four hours for it to charge 40%. Yeah. And in other parts of the world, you know, they they have more robust public transport systems. Mm -hmm. But like here in like the Midwest area, things are spread out so far that it's not yeah. really realistic. And so, yeah, a car is necessary. Mm -hmm. There has been a shift, though. Like you have always been a Ford guy. Yeah. I've always been the whatever I like at that time. Right. Like I've never been a brand loyal. I like all of them as long as it's a reliable and I like the the appearance of it and the yeah. performance of it. But there has been a very obvious shift of people in the truck market going to Ram. Like Ram has really upped their game when it comes to interior design and quality yeah. and, and reliability. I mean, especially that's, in the initial. That's true. That's true. So there, there's been a shift and it's been noticed. Yeah. Although if you look at to if you look into um, the more long term, mm -hmm. uh, GM actually has the most recalls from 2020 to 2022. So in the last 22 years, oh, yeah. GM has had more recalls than anybody. Yeah. Their Fall. late 90s, early 2000s platform mm -hmm. was probably their greatest ever. Right. When they changed it off of that, it kind of went downhill. A lot yeah. of issues. Right. But then followed by Ford. Followed by Ford. <laughs> and then Chrysler. So the big three American car manufacturers are the three largest amount of recalls in America over the past 22 years. Mm. So that's unfortunate. Well, I will say that every time we've gotten mm. a Ford, mm -hmm. we've always had recalls. I yeah. don't know if that's like a, it could be a thing that happens with any car. I mean, no one's perfect. Right. But every time I've had a Ford, recall, recall, recall. Mm. Yeah. Is it mostly software? Or is it mechanical parts, physical parts? So, I think it's a combination. Yeah, sometimes it's electrical, sometimes it's mechanical. I know um, we've had like five or six recalls on the Atlas, but it's all been software updates. Mm. Speaking of your Atlas, did you happen to notice where Volvo is on this uh, JD Power list? What's well, a good thing Atlas is made by Volkswagen. Oh, that's true. <laughs> well, did you did, did you happen to notice where Volkswagen is? We're on this a car list? channel. <laughs> we know cars. Hey, correct letter, wrong letter after that. Yeah, well, you know. But uh, did you happen to notice where Volkswagen where's is? Where's Volkswagen on there? Are they near the bottom? D down here at the very bottom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the bottom three. So I've owned two <laughs> Volkswagens in my life. Um, back in, in mid-2000s, I had a Jetta. Okay, yep. And then the Atlas now. And you had a Volvo too, didn't you? I had a Volvo as well. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, the, the Volvo actually worked very well. It had like 220-some thousand miles. Mm -hmm. And the engine just finally got too tired. Right. Gave up. Um, but as far as the car and the quality of the vehicle, that w it was great. Right. It was an O2, I believe it was. Um, but the two, the Jetta and the Atlas that I have now, they run, they both ran fine. The powertrain has been proven in many different platforms. The problem that I've always seen with the Volkswagens is the little doodads and knickknacks inside the vehicle mm. like the Electrical Jetta stuff. yeah like the Jetta it would like the covers and the for the buttons and things like the seat adjuster the covers would get loose and they would just fall off or the knobs uh, would just fall off that kind of thing right um in the Atlas it's a lot of software stuff like mm. we have so many glitches and gremlins in that thing it's it's crazy mm. gotcha okay so software and like accessory yeah. type of stuff so buy old school muscle cars with no you know, vast amounts of computer stuff. and That's true. You don't have to worry about recalls. It'd be interesting to see how many recalls were average in like the 70s or like right. the late 60s versus today. I do have kind of a chart about that. Oh, so. I didn't know that. I promise. This <laughs> was did. not like a set volley spike thing. No, he did not. I, legitimately. Are you but. psychic? Well, we are brothers. Mm. Wow. You could read each other. Right? <laughs> um, I can't read. Thanks for bringing that up. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring up that bad memory. How dare I'm just, you? I'm just kidding. Um, I'll make Can you. Read. I'll make you banana cream pie. I love banana cream pies. I know. <laughs> he, speaking you, of which, no, totally side topic. No, no, we, we um, stay on track. We have gained subscribers in our last. We have. <gasps> we did. In our yeah. last we episode, have. we had 18, and we referred to it. And I just threw out a random crazy notion. Oh, yeah, yeah. Man, if totally. we get to 20, right? 
I didn't think we would achieve it. You know, from 18 to 20, that is a that's a chasm of a yeah. distance. Yeah, totally. And a massive. I was like, jump. man, if we can get to 20, <laughs> smash a pie in Jason's face. You said it was an example. Yeah, yeah as an example. <coughs> and uh, <laughs> well, guess what? We have 23 subscribers, and I do want to give a shout out. Is it okay if I give a shout out? Sure, go to for it. who may be. Uh, I'll just say our self-proclaimed number one fan. Self-proclaimed, yeah. Uh, so, shout out to Katie. I know you're. I guarantee. I know you're watching now. This one, I <laughs> promise, I know is watching. Right. And Emma, Katie, and Emma. Thank you. They thank you very much. They yes. told me it was their mission to. They go to college in Ohio, and awesome. they said it's their mission to get the entire college to be um, subscribers and watchers, even if they have to tie them to chairs. <laughs> tape their eyes open. I, I mean, I don't condone, you know, necessarily tying people up. I condoned it. We should buy. I'm them just kidding. I didn't. I didn't. We we should buy them duct tape for Christmas then. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> or They'll zip ties. How, how about we like three D print them like a break check ornament instead? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I mean, yes, but the others are practical. For yeah. when they need to tie people up and make no. them watch our stuff. Yeah, when they're when they're doing vehicle challenges and they need duct tape to fix their vehicles. Yeah, I mean, I mean to be totally. fair, you need a camera person on the outside. She, I mean, we've discussed how this operates with duct tape and yeah. camera people. Yeah. Oh man, I don't want to be duct taped up against a car. <laughs> we we got to get the proper camera angles. It's it's just until you know we can afford a you know hundred thousand dollar camera car. I guess I'll do what I need to do. I appreciate that dedication. Sacrifices. Commitment to excellence. Indeed. That that's what gained us five subscribers Always. over the last week. <laughs> right? <laughs> On our way up. Right. We're almost a quarter of the way to a hundred. Indeed. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Mm-hmm. Thank Good you, call. Katie and Emma. We appreciate you. Very much so. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bye. We're <gonna> continue with, <laughs> with what we were talking about? Yeah. Okay. Sidebar over. Yes. Uh well, it doesn't go back to the seventies. But um, the number of recalls over since 20, 2001 to 2020, you can see a clear, like, going up. Like yeah, here, clear trend. Yeah. And then when it comes to quality of vehicles recalled or the quantity of vehicles recalled. You got, yeah. I just want to say this. You got to love a good bar graph. Right? I mean, you just got to love it. Yeah. If you're not into that spreadsheet kind of stuff. I don't know what to tell you. I'm sorry. You should, because it's you just gotta love it. Look right? at that. It's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> what happened in but, 2014? Yeah. Uh, the same thing. You see that you see it here, 2014, so 15, 16. Count of recalls. And then what quality of vehicles recalled. Yeah. And then this one, completion rate of vehicles. So people are getting their recalls oh. taken care of. Yeah. So it's but I just thought that was interesting. It's like there's a trend of more and more recalls over the past 20 years. So the more <laughs> the more advanced and technologically superior vehicles become, superior. the more problems they're developing. Right. Which just yeah. proves that you don't have to change things if it's working. Like you want to make it more comfortable, sure, but right, yeah. to try to change the the operational, you know, foundation of something. Yeah. It's I mean, the trend shows that what worked in the beginning, yeah, there was nothing wrong with it. The True. powertrain and, was great. And if you want to look at, like, you know, probably some of the most advanced cars, like a Tesla, like they have more recalls than just about any other car manufacturer. Mm -hmm. So it's, and they're a fairly new company. So they haven't been around nearly as long as Ford or mm -hmm. Nissan or, you know, these companies. So, you know, you can give them a little bit of slack for that just because. It takes a little while for a company to yeah get things sorted out, but still though, it's the, over, the more the more advanced it is, the harder it is to work out all yeah. the bugs. Over that number of years to show the trend continue to go up, that's that's more than just well, this is a first or second year vehicle. We're working the kinks out. Right. That is an overall picture of everybody's trying to advance in this particular area. Right. And it's creating advanced problems. Yeah. Because of it. True that. But there is some good news for Ford fans such as myself. You know, uh, the Ford CEO has recognized the problem and has stated publicly uh, that he's committed to fixing it. 
Um, he oh. wants. Wow. I mean, <laughs> empty promises. Hey, it's not empty until hey, we it's... will see. Only time will tell. I don't want to be <laughs> pessimistic. I'm a very optimistic person. But but I'll be hopeful. Recognizing the problem is the first step to fixing a problem. That's true. What's his so, name? I just, What's the CEO's name? I don't remember. Oh. I didn't put that on the list. Oh, I was going to call him out by name. Maybe yeah. I'll maybe Let's, I'll lay it in front of the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Jim Farley. Jim Farley. We're watching you, Jim, James, yeah. Jimothy. On. How long ago, though, did he say that? Uh, if I remember right, it was like a couple months ago or maybe a year ago. I don't know. It, it was f relatively recently that he said that. Oh, okay. According to what he said, though, he wants body-on-frame vehicles like the F-150, um, other utility vehicles, to be best in class by 2025, and all other vehicles to land in the top quarter um, by 2025 as well. So, Which they know how to do, because they've been there before oh, yeah. for a very long time. Yeah, Ford wouldn't be, the F-150 wouldn't be the number one selling truck in the world mm -hmm. if their quality has always been bad. Did I ever like, talk about the F-150 in Honduras? Uh, it doesn't, doesn't sound familiar. So um, last summer I went on a missions trip um, to Honduras and the the roads down there aren't roads. Like they're mm. very rough dirt paths, right. I would call. And they're usually on a mountainside. Mm. And anyway, every truck that was used was an F-150. Oh, wow. So there was F-150s and Toyota Hiluxes, which is like a you know, great yeah. Tacoma. Mm -hmm. Right. And so <clears throat> I asked the guy who was running the operation down there, I said, hey, man, why do you use F-150s? Is there any reason in particular? Hmm? I said, and not like Dodges or Chevy or Toyota. And he said, well, Toyotas are great, but for what they do when they deliver supplies or bring in missions teams, hmm. they don't. their payload capacity isn't enough. Right, it's not. And so they fail because they're always putting them overweight. So gotcha, it's not the vehicle's, gotcha. capa it's the vehicle's capability is limited with the payload. Right, it's not their reliability. It's just they yeah. don't haul as much. Yeah, there's not enough space, and they're just not big enough. Right. Okay. And so so then they started looking into like Chevy and Dodge and like the full size trucks. Mm -hmm. Tundras were too big for these pathways. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So tundras were too big and too heavy because some of these have like like a, a sharp turn on a hillside would have like mm. water runoff. And if right. you get too close to the edge, now you're just creating it to be even more narrow or running the risk of falling down the cliff yourself. Right, right. And so he said that Chevy's um broke down too much. They couldn't handle it. Mm. And he said the same thing with the Dodges. Oh, wow. And he said Fords have been the only F1, the F-150 has been the only truck that has been able to be reliable, carry the weight, not break down, not have any issues. Wow. And they've been the most rugged. So he goes, we just buy F-150s or F he has one F-250, but. Right. Wow. I mean, and so man, like that, that itself, like that's real world, legit yeah. real world use. And it's hard every single day for years on yeah. end. Yeah, daily punishment yeah. for years, like you said. And, and so I, I told him, I was like, man, the, if anything, I said, I don't need any salesman. Right. Just being down here for a week and seeing what these trucks go through and knowing that that happens year round. Right. Like that's enough to be like, I'm going F 150. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So clearly Ford knows how to make a quality, reliable right. vehicle. Clearly they do. But lately, though, you got to pick up yeah. your game, Jim. Come on, man. Yeah, these aren't brand new <laughs> F one fifties. He'll he'll get them from America and he'll get them like with a salvage title, mm. and they'll take them down and they'll fix them up and rebuild them. If, gotcha, mostly gotcha. it's like body damage kind of stuff. Like if a tree falls on a bed of a truck and it right. totals it, right, right, and right. he'll ship it down from America and rip, fix the bed, do metal yeah. work on it. So that will be interesting to see like ten years from now or five five mm -hmm. ten years from now if they keep buying F one fifties like the current day F one fifties when they get some age into them. Or if they're going to switch to another mm -hmm. truck. Yeah, none of them. I don't I don't think any of them had the EcoBoost motors. I think they were all the V8s. Right. Yeah, which which would make sense. Yeah. Because, like, the 5.0 has um, been a pretty reliable motor. You can get the 5.0 in the Mustang and the, mm -hmm. and the um, F-150. I mean, it's had its recalls and issues, you know. But yeah. for the most part, from what I understand, it's been a pretty reliable engine. So. Yeah. So I've got something that's a little bit more fun than Betrayal. So I'll, let, I'll let you choose. I'll let you choose. I have three different topics. Okay. That are all um, relatable to today. To today. Or the today season. The oh, okay. season of today. Okay. Christmas season. Yeah. So um, we can go through one of them, two of them, or three of them. 
but I'll let okay. you choose um, either weird hacks or games. I'm going to go, huh? Go ahead. <laughs> you say it. Go ahead. No, you go. You go. You, you go. say it. You say it. You say it. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's do you want? Let's go with weird. Weird. Yeah. Okay, so this is sort of in line with something that we talked about months and months ago, but it's completely different. Okay. Okay. So if you remember in one of our early podcasts, uh, we talked about like weird laws in oh, different yeah. states. So these are along that line, but it's 17 weird driving laws that are in the U.S. that are still enforced. Oh. And so I think okay. that, so because of the season, people uh -huh. are either going home, have recently gone home from driving right. across to visit family, true, true, or they're getting ready to do a drive for Christmas mm -hmm. or New Year's or what have you. And so if you drive through any of these states, these are 17 weird laws that you need to make sure you're aware of. Good to know. Okay. Number one, you must pay for rescue costs if you get stuck in a barricaded flood zone in Arizona. What? You, okay, you so must if pay you, for if you get stuck costs. in a barricaded flood zone. So if Arizona is dealing with floods, uh huh, and you get stuck in a zone that they have barricaded off, right? And they must rescue you, right? You have to pay for the rescue costs. But what if you were already there in the first place? Hey, you should have known. I've <laughs> been psychic enough. Like so, I live in that area. How yep. am I? <laughs> but it's barricaded though, so would it not be illegal to be there in the first place? Yeah. So it's anybody who bypasses a barricaded oh, zone. Oh, they have to go past. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, it's not like so, they trap you in. So you This isn't Fortnite where it's closing in on you. Right. So it's like so it's like I'm going to break the law and then be upset that the state doesn't pay for me to get my car out of the area that I broke the law in. Yeah. Yeah, you did that to yourself. Yeah, you pay for the emergency support. Yeah, no, uh, I, I think fair. that's completely valid. Okay. I, don't, yeah. I don't think that's even weird. That, I think that's valid. Uh, yeah. Number two, this one doesn't really deal with travel as much as it deals with living there. Okay. Um, if you live in some Alaskan counties that are so remote, okay, some of them don't require you to register your car. Therefore, they don't require insurance. Huh. Whoa. So if you don't want to register your car or pay for insurance, move to Alaska. Move to Alaska. I, I mean, mean they, like, how bad is it out there in the wilderness, though? <laughs> right? Like, how much are you willing to sacrifice to drive, like, four hours to I a store? I don't think that lifestyle is worth me not paying insurance or registration. Right. So basically, their thought is, well, considering the fact that to get to the DMV to register your car, you'll probably die. <laughs> Why don't we just, yeah. you know, be like, eh, just drive it. We'll just let that one go. Yeah, we're just going to let it go. <laughs> uh, number three. Um, this one is important if you're visiting the state of Arkansas. In Little Rock specifically. Okay. Honking after 9 p.m. is a public nuisance and you could be fined up to $1,000. I like that one. However. Huh. Oh. oh. <laughs> Drop the hammer. It's not anywhere in Little Rock. Oh, okay. So the law bans drivers from honking their horn where cold drinks and sandwiches are served after 9 p.m. Just wait, in those areas? Wait, what? Where cold drinks and sandwiches are served. So pretty much a deli. You can't honk your horns at a deli after 9 p.m. But anywhere else you can. Yeah. Oh. Um. Yeah. Why? <laughs> I don't know. Well, Who, who's who's eating who's <laughs> eating sandwiches at nine p.m. Anyways, I don't know. <laughs> Arkansas love their loves their football, and they want to go to the deli afterward. All right, number four. That is definitely a weird one. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> number four in the state of Delaware. If you're traveling through Delaware, Delaware. Hi, I'm in Delaware. No, so if you're going through Delaware, back to the Delaware topic. Yeah, Delaware. Um. And you are too cheap to pay for a hotel room as you travel. Mm -hmm. Just know that you cannot change your clothes inside your vehicle because of I the mean, whole public nudity thing. Yeah, yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Um, number five, in the state of Georgia, mm -hmm. you are allowed to drive your car barefoot, but you cannot ride your motorcycle barefoot. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's I mean, it'd be, it'd be, unless you have, you know, a foot of iron, it would hurt to shift. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, I, mean, I guess. Yeah. I don't know how many people are going to be 
it wouldn't really apply to your travel, but in um, Honolulu, Hawaii, oh. billboards are illegal. Really? Because it ruins the scenery? Yep. That's exactly why. <laughs> I could see that. However, yeah. there are billboards in Hawaii. Oh. I've been there. And yeah, I've seen I was, them. I was, yeah, you've been there. So. And uh, so there is a stipulation that says you can have billboards if it's related to official court use, political campaigns, or open house invitations. Oh. So yeah. it has to be like these official sort of acceptable things. You can't right. just have a random billboard, you know, um, advertising your law firm or something. Right. All right. So if you are in Idaho and in Georgia, they do this. If you're a bicyclist, you must treat red lights like stop signs. You don't must, but you can treat yeah. red lights like stop signs. So You can? Yeah. So if you're at a red light in a car mm-hmm. and a bicyclist comes up next to you, and then they just continue on through the intersection when it's clear. Huh. They can do that legally. Because in most states, a bicyclist must follow the same traffic rules because you're technically on a vehicle. Right. Uh-huh. Um, in Idaho and Georgia, you can stop, treat it like a stop sign, and then continue through the intersection huh. at your own risk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. At your own risk. <laughs> um, here's one that I believe, um, I don't want to name names, but probably 99% of America would fail at. Oh. In the state of Maryland, you can be fined up to a thousand dollars for swearing from your vehicle. Really? So if you say a curse word in your car in Maryland, huh. you can be fined up to a hundred bucks. Wow. It's a good thing that I very rarely curse, if ever. Yeah. <laughs> yep. No obscene language behind the wheel. Do you remember you showed a, a picture of a guy transporting a large animal in his Crown Victoria a I while do, ago? I do remember that, yeah. In the state of Massachusetts, uh-huh. you must, le- by law, properly secure your bear during transportation in Massachusetts. Just your bear? A bear. Yep, just the bear. So in 1902, the state of Massachusetts passed a specific law on how you should secure your bear and then later later amended it to include any wild animal. So it's not oh, just like, oh, okay. so- it's not just like we're going to change it to <laughs> no wild animals in your car. Right, yeah. We're going to include any wild animal, not a tamed animal, not right. a trained animal. Right, just... If you are transporting a wild animal in your car, it must be properly secured. They did amend it a second time. Okay. To, is... It has to be in the back. Oh. <laughs> so, it's not, What? They're what? not taking the law away. They're just getting more specific with it. Safest place in the car is back seat center. Yeah. <laughs> I, we need to go there and see if this is a problem. Oh, yeah. When, when you started that and you said it was just bears, I'm like, so apparently they don't care about lions and tigers. Oh my. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the uh, the minimum fine is fifty bucks. Oh. If you don't have it properly secured. Are you serious? Yeah. Only fifty. I mean, to be fair, that's the minimum. Oh man. To be fair, I would want a bear or wild animal to, to be secured, so I still have a head when I arrive. Yeah. At the location. It's kind of like uh, Ricky Bobby when he's got that wild oh, yeah. cougar in the backseat. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, Karen. Get down. <laughs> There's a cougar in the car. <laughs> yeah. It's like, <laughs> if you stay calm, that majestic animal will stay calm as well, and you'll be perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a cougar ripped apart my, what was it, my uh, Gale, was it something Gale shirt? Something like that. Crystal Gale. <laughs> Crystal my Gale. Crystal Gale shirt. <laughs> okay. Uh, Anyways. Number 10. Uh-huh. Uh huh. If you are an adult, so eighteen years or older, you do not have to wear a seatbelt in New Hampshire. Interesting. Although it's recommended because it has been proven for many years to reduce the chance of casualty, right, uh-huh. or injury. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're one day from turning eighteen or younger, you must wear a seatbelt. You can get a moving citation. You huh. get a ticket if you're in the back seat not wearing a seatbelt and you're under eighteen. Wow. Interesting. Yep. The- that one, in a weird way, I kind of agree with. I, again, I kind of in a weird way too. I again, I recommend you wear your seatbelt, but at the same time, I always thought it was weird that mm-hmm. you could get a fine for putting only your own body at risk. Right, like you're not putting any like other person at risk, no, even in your own car. <laughs> there's no securing device on a motorcycle. Yeah, or in a bus. It's up for to that you matter. to hold. Yeah, or in a school or in a bus. bus. Yes, yeah, school bus with children. <laughs> so it's like that is filled with windows. Right. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. All right. Um, number eleven. If you're in New Jersey, traveling through New Jersey, it's illegal to pump your own gas. 
You must let an attendant do it for you. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. They come out. They make sure that your engine is turned off. They make sure there's no lit cigarettes near the vehicle, and they will pump your gas for you. Hmm. Interesting. Which is a thing that used to be around like everywhere as yeah. a service. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it wasn't a law, but it was a service right. like in the 50s and 60s where yeah. and you would so, tip them. And a lot of services, like convenient services like that, have gone away. Like, I mean, now most people, you know, scan their own groceries. I mean, mm-hmm. we, we do. Yeah, did, <laughs> there's a thing going around on Facebook. It's like the self-checkout Christmas party. Right. <laughs> Aaron's like, I want to go to that. <laughs> But you know, there there was a time where you know service was considered you know a big a big deal. Yeah. You know, it's like you go to a place, you're giving them your money, and they mm-hmm. provided you with good service. Yeah. Now it's just kind of like, eh. yeah, that's that's one thing in America that's really kind of like just dropped, like dwindled away is yeah. people just having a heart to serve other people. Yeah, it's true. Um, all right, number twelve, horse riders. In Pennsylvania, have the same rights as regular drivers, whether it's a, you're just sitting on a horse, bareback saddled, or you're in a horse drawn carriage. Huh. You have to, yeah, you can get a reckless driving ticket just like a person in a car. The next hmm. one's in Rhode Island. Okay. You cannot test your horse's speed on highways in Rhode Island. Hmm. So you can't see how fast your horse is on the highways. Hmm. Um, number 14, some miners cannot travel in the open bed of a truck in South Carolina. Wait. Does it specifically clarify some? Uh, if you're under 15. Okay. So a minor is anybody under 18. Okay. So if you're 16 to 18 or 16 or 17, you can ride in the bed of the truck, just not on the highway. Um, okay. But if you're 15 or younger, you can't be in the bed of the truck. And yet seatbelts. Yeah. Yet seatbelts. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't say that you have to have a seat back there because some states you can let anybody ride in the back as long as there's a restraining device. Like if you have seats with I've belts. I've heard that one. Yeah, you can install seats in the back mm-hmm. with seat belts. Um, I wonder what the law is in Kansas. When I don't remember. I to used that. to know, but yeah. I don't remember. Right. I yeah. believe that's what it is. If you install the seat, it has to have seat belts. Right. Kind of like if you um, if you take the top off of a Jeep, mm-hmm. you're kind of technically, that's what you're at. Oh, yeah. Open sure. with yeah. seat belt. Number 15. Three more. Hunting from a vehicle is banned in Tennessee. You cannot hunt any wild animal from a vehicle in Tennessee. <laughs> that should probably be banned in yeah. every state. It doesn't, yeah. say, it doesn't say, I just want to clarify this, it doesn't say hunting with a vehicle. Oh, just out of a vehicle. You cannot hunt from the vehicle. Um, all right, next one. Two okay. more. This would help out um, when Dad had the Kia about oh, yeah. the windshield almost coming out. Okay. Um, in the state of Texas, you're required to have a windshield. However, windshields are not included in the vehicle inspections in Texas. So like when, if you buy a vehicle and you get it inspected before you register it, right? Um, on their checklist of things to check, they're not checking for a windshield to be in place. Right. But, but when you register in Texas, if you've ever been there, their registration goes on stickers on the windshield. <laughs> Oh, so, wah, wah. <laughs> but they're not going to check. So I don't see you have a sticker. Well, you don't see you have a windshield either. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Supposed what's, to the pro- it in the air. what's the problem? You can't dock me for not having a windshield. It's not on your checklist. Mm. Right? Yeah. What's, what's the problem yeah. here, sir? What the problem is. <laughs> All right. And finally, um, you can, you can. are allowed to okay. keep and eat roadkill in Virginia. If you were the one that hit it. Oh, oh only if you're the one that yeah, hit it. Yeah, if you're the one that hit it. Specifically refers to bears and deer. Hey, it's still fresh. If a Bear. driver hits either one, they must notify the conservation police. And if the office confirms the collision was the cause of death, the officer would award the animal to the driver who may do with it what they will, including eat it. They even get a nifty certificate. <laughs> Saying that it was legitimate. Wow. I wonder how long that process <laughs> is, though. Yeah. Like, by the time all that goes through, like, the right. bear deer is, like, rotten. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's even capable of being eaten anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or unless they're like, hold up. We got to put that in the fridge. Can you gift it to, to a family member? Like, what, if, <gasps> oh. what if you hit it? What if you're a vegetarian? <laughs> right? That's you true. Know? I Merry mean, they Christmas. say you can do with it what you will. Yeah. yeah. So, but, okay, so... 
What if you were to hit, so you hit it, right? Bear or a deer. A bear or a deer. And then you go through the process, and then the officer is like, congratulations, here's your certificate. You can keep your bear or deer that you hit. And it's like, great. How much can I sell this for to repair the car that is now <laughs> completely decimated? Yeah. What type of bears are in uh, Virginia? Let's see. Virginia bears. Because I'm trying to think of how big that, of a, a bear you could hit. Like, if you could. You know, I don't know. Chicago bears. No. Oh. Not the Virginia Bears. Chicago is in totally different state. Fair enough. <laughs> There's the black bear. Okay. Like, what is the biggest bear? Grizzly? I think so. I'm just wondering how big it because a bear would probably do a lot more damage. There's so much more substance to it than a deer. Yeah. Let's see. I think it's just black bears. Black okay. bears? What are the biggest bear? Yeah. Kodak. Bears. Kodiak. Kodiak bears. Kodiak how how bear? big do black bears get? Are the largest bears in the world. Can reach 10 feet tall and weigh 1,500 pounds. Whoa. Ouch. You don't want to hit that car, That with a car. Okay, what kind of bears in? Black bears. Black bears. So adult female bears from NewJersey.gov called Sows weigh about 175 pounds. Adult mm. male bears called Boars Weigh around 400 pounds. That's more than twice the size of a female. No kidding. Wow. Whoa. Talk about size Dang. disparity. <laughs> so I guess something like that, like 400 pounds or a 200 pound, two to 400 pound, probably wouldn't do the same damage as like a Kodiak weighing 1,500. Right, yeah. That's like getting hit by a Miata. Yeah, <laughs> right. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share with your friends. Yep. Take it easy. Bye.